part two of my interview with 31-year Canadian constitutional lawyer Rocco Gulati. You know, discussing a contrary perspective to the mainstream narrative is not the easiest thing to do. But like I stated in part one, my heart told me to conduct this interview. And that's what I did. I think it's important for citizens to become aware of the full scope of events and timeline as things are moving quite quickly right now. And history has told us that once we give up our rights, it's really hard to get them back. Here's a quick summary of the claim from Rocco, if you're just jumping in. And if you're not, just skip ahead. In a nutshell, my clients seek, uh, as against the government actors, declaratory relief. We don't seek monetary damages. And as against CBC, we seek $11 million for their tortious transgressions. Uh, essentially against the government, we seek declarations that number one, both Trudeau and uh, Premier Ford have uh, effectively dispensed with Parliament and are ruling under the pretense of royal prerogative contrary to uh, uh, our Constitution. Mm -hmm. Secondly, that the measure, uh, declarations that the measures, the COVID measures are neither scientifically nor medically based, that they are extreme, unwarranted, and are causing severe damages. Furthermore, that the measures are a breach of sections 2, 7, 8, 9, and 15 of the Charter. Section 2 being uh, freedom of conscience, uh, conscience, belief, association, freedom of the press and the media. Mm -hmm. Section 7 is the right to life, liberty, and security of the person. Section 8, uh, the right against unreasonable search or se and seizure in, in the closing down of the businesses. Section 9 is the right against arbitrary, arbitrary detention, mm -hmm. and that is the uh, confrontations with bylaw officers and police officers who are arbitrarily detaining people and who are engaging in unlawful search and seizure in terms of demanding personal information mm -hmm. that they're not, not entitled to. Mm -hmm. And really, Section 15, which is 7 and 15 are the most severe ones. That is the Section 15, the most vulnerable groups in our society have been the, the, the most viciously affected victims of these measures. That is people with physical and neurological disability, whether it be adults or children, and especially children with special needs. So just think about it for a second. You're a special needs child. You can't understand COVID measures. You can't understand any of this. So in, 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 in invoking the measures, the government did not even put its mind to, what are these people going to do? Did they, did they have alternative programs to keep their, their social, the social matrix in place, their therapy, yeah. their playgrounds, their gyms, their swimming pools? No. So these kids are stuck at home going batty, insanely batty. Right, and it's it's torture for them. Literally, it's torture for them. And then, of course, Section 15, also the elderly in the long-term care facilities, mm -hmm. these rat holes where they're literally dying, self-imprisoned, in their own room. They're living in gulags. Eighty-four percent of all those who died of COVID in Canada are the elderly in those types of facilities. So there was no there was no game plan while these governments are pursuing their own geopolitical and economic agenda on behalf of the WHO and the, 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 you know, the billionaire and corporate oligarchs of the world, mm -hmm. they don't care. Yeah. You know they don't care because to this day they haven't put any uh, thing in place to take care of the physically and neurologically disabled and the elderly. You know, Ford announces that maybe an, one new long-term care facility is going to be ready soon. Mm -hmm. yuppie do. Damage is already done, and furthermore, it's just not enough. It's too little, too late. Yeah. They should have thought about it before they implemented the measures. And so those are the charter, the, 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 the relief that we're seeking yeah. as against the government actors. Thank you. You said that the agenda is globalize, corporatize, and virtualize the economy. And it's been set in motion since 2010. Tell me about the Rockefeller Foundation report of 2010. Well, it wasn't set in motion from 2010. This has been an evolving thing with free trade deals. It was explicitly articulated in 2010. In, tw in May 2010, the Rockefeller Foundation did a report which was leaked mm -hmm. in which they, they theorized a future scenario whereby a virus escapes Wuhan, mm -hmm. China, uh, Wuhan, China, yeah. coincidence of coincidence, 
and then they theorize on how we would and should deal with that. Mm -hmm. And the whole thrust of the report basically is, quote, how to obtain global governance in a pandemic. Mm -hmm. And if you read that report from 10 years ago, it is the script you are living through now. Yeah. So the other thing that happened in 2010 is Bill Gates announced, quote, the decade of vaccines. That's when he, he invested an initial $10 billion with the agenda to vaccinate the world and vaccinate the world mandatorily. And he's been progressing with that with the Gavi, his general, the General Alliance on Vaccination and Inoculation. Mm -hmm. in, in, uh, uh, along with those two, uh, uh, that organization, the World Economic Forum, which is a, a conglomerate of these economic forces, has also been pursuing the same agenda. Mm -hmm. So who wins out of these COVID measures? The vaccine companies, the, uh, uh, the phone IT companies, the internet companies, yeah, yeah. it's all connected. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, July of 2019, Google announced they were getting into partnership with one of the big pharma companies. Google is now a pharmaceutical company. Yeah. So, so when, you, when you close down small businesses, yeah. when you make people stay home, and not interact as human beings, and when you threaten them with a virus that's going to kill everybody, you're going to have everybody vaccinated, everybody working on a computer, everybody having a cell phone mm -hmm. through which all their contacts are traceable, so when they have to preempt social protest, they can. Mm -hmm. Hong Kong now, you're required by law to have a cell phone. Why? I mean, that's bizarre. That's absurd. Required? You're required. Mm -hmm. Because... This whole, this whole agenda uh, doesn't really work well without a cell phone. Because mm -hmm. when you want to go into a restaurant, you have to give your particulars of your social contacts, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so if people didn't walk around with a cell phone, they couldn't be surveyed. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. so, so that's what I mean by uh, overnight in four months, you got Google Classroom. You got Zoom court hearings. Everything has been virtualized. And who benefits from that? The same people. Mm -hmm. It's the same handful of oligarchs who benefit from all of that. Yeah. I, I was really curious and interested to find out that uh, Bill Gates was at a closed roundtable meeting with Ontario mayors. and yeah, 400 around the world. Yeah. And, and Bonnie, Bonnie, Bonnie Crombie yeah. delightedly and proudly tweeted this saying, you know, had a virtual meeting with Bill Gates. He's taking, he's seeing us through the COVID. Excuse me? Yeah. He's a billionaire oligarch who has no medical training, who's not elected anywhere, let alone Mississauga or Toronto. What's he, What's doing, he doing leading here? this meeting? So now you understand that the WHO, since Trump uh, withdrew U.S. government funding, the, the two top funders of the WHO are Bill Gates personally and Gavi, his organization, secondly. And then there's three other foundations I haven't tracked down yet. Mm. The WHO is bought, controlled, and directed by these billionaire oligarchs. Their agenda is determined by them. I'm sorry. If you're putting in over a billion dollars a year into an organization, yeah. they're listening to you. Oh, yeah. And they have no business. Why does a UN agency, why, why is a UN agency even allowed to take private sector contributions? Great question. Right. Why? So if you say that we're going to personally contribute to Prime Minister Trudeau and his liberal government, people would be aghast. You're saying, what are you talking about? You can't do that. Yeah. He's been elected. He runs. Yeah. But we can do it with a UN agency? Mm -hmm. That's bizarre. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's all corrupt. So do you, do you think that majority of Canadians are okay with their rights being violated in the name of public health and safety? Or feeling safe? Yeah, you know, you, you, hear, you hear that question and you hear a statement all the time. I'm sure I'm speaking on behalf of all Canadians when I say, who the hell knows? Let me put it this way. I'm a lawyer. I can only deal on evidence. And sometimes that evidence is not even reliable evidence. But to answer that question, I, I can only gauge that from polls I see. But the law is the law. Right. The law is the law. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The law, whether, the, whether most Canadians mean, want it or not, it doesn't matter. Yeah. The law says you can't be given medical treatment without informed consent, okay? Mm -hmm. 
that's that that's the law in Canada so far under the charter mm -hmm. okay so I can only say that uh, let's say for instance uh, with respect to vaccines uh, the last Angus Reid poll Angus Reid is considered a very reliable posters all the political parties use them 32 percent of Canadians said they would not take the vaccine for the first year to see if anybody drops dead or gets damaged they want to wait and see 14 percent of Canadians said under no circumstances, come hell or high water, I'm not taking any mandatory vaccine. Yeah. Of the 56% who said they would be willing to take it, half said we'd be willing to take it, but we would be extremely worried and concerned about the side effects because of how they've rushed it and the circumstances. Yeah. So the answer to your question is really a mixed bag. Yeah. There's a core of about 15%. Obviously not. They're not willing to do all of this in the name of public safety because public safety is not a god or a neutral robotic institution it's the will of a handful of people just think about it two or three people issue the orders of the who yeah. one person in canada dr tam mm -hmm. one person in ontario dr williams one person in toronto dr de villa so we're talking like the vatican a hierarchy of five people mm -hmm. put out the church law how do you read public health into that? Yeah. I don't. Where are all the experts who are being ignored, suppressed, vilified, right? You don't, I didn't see any of them on mainstream media, no. especially Canadian mainstream media. No. Like there's, there's been no contrary uh, narratives. No, there hasn't been. And most people walk around being afraid for their life. I've been seeing more people wearing masks outside, like walking around on the streets. And my, my concern is that you know, they're normalizing this now. Well, that's their intention. Yeah. Well, Teresa Tam says you have to be expect to wear a mask till 2022. What crystal ball does she have? 2022. <laughs> you see how this fascist, this is a scam. If she can say I have to wear a mask till 2022, this is a fascist scam. But people are cool with it. Like this is, this. I don't understand like how people are like, oh, okay, cool. Like 2022, sure. I guess well, people okay. are cool about it because they don't think about it. Or they they have these conversations. Okay, now let's go. Let's zoom down to the family or the friend unit. You express that, guys. This is kind of like messed well, up, right? And then you get ostracized by you know your family or your friends, and then you just shut down. It's 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 the witch hunt. It's the Catholic Inquisition. But that's because you know when they do these studies that have been consistent for years, because of our alpha nature. 3% of society is engaged and actually runs society. That's the stat, 3%, okay? The American Revolution, on the other side of the coin, which had the highest participation of a revolution in the last 300 years, only 3% of the uh, colonists partook in the American Revolution. In Canada, when we had martial law on the streets in, the in October 1970 mm -hmm. because of the FLQ, there were less than a dozen members of the FLQ. At the same time, Italy had its crisis with the Red Brigades. Mm -hmm. There was less than a dozen members of the Red Brigades. Mm -hmm. The Hofmeier gang in Germany, same thing, less than a dozen members. Fidel Castro chartered a boat in Mexico with some weapons to sail to Cuba to conduct his revolution with 12 others. He landed on the beach, and Cuban intelligence knew he was coming. Seven of them got slaughtered on the beach, and he went to the hills with less than a dozen people. Okay? okay? Yeah. So my point is that most people don't read, don't care, and that's, the, and that's a tragedy. So that you're talking about compl complacency then? Complacency and conformity, that's the nature of the species. Is it though? Because we're having this conversation... Maybe you're one of the three percent. I mean, how are we supposed to live? <laughs> you know, like, uh, how, no, like but how, you, no, I'm not. What, say, what's okay? What I'm, what is the world you what is the world you imagine? Your best case scenario. What is your most ideal outcome um, when you know this gets to trial and everything? Like, well, the what? ideal outcome is that you know you have the right the constitutionally protected right to choose what happens to your body mm -hmm. if you don't want to wear a mask you don't wear a mask if you don't want a vaccine you don't take a vaccine if you're too afraid to go outside 
and want to wear a mask, then you stay home. Mm -hmm. Why do I have to stay home? Mm -hmm. as, uh, as a retired UK Supreme Court judge said in June of this year, he mm -hmm. said, this is, this is ridiculous. Life is risky in all aspects. Yes. Life is risk. It's the definition of life. Yes. So why is it that the, it's the people... Let me put it to you this way. I don't have a driver's license. I walk everywhere. 60,000 people are killed by cars every year. Can I insist that drivers stop driving because they're a public threat to me? <laughs> no. Well, that's the same. That's what they're saying now. You have to wear a mask. You have to get inoculated because you risk me. No. You know, I stay away from roads and highways. I watch myself, right? Yeah. And so if, they, if they're too afraid to go out without a mask or with a mask, if there's a single person out there without one, yeah. you stay home. Or, okay, why can't we have, uh, you know, non-mask hours in stores? Good question. They should, we should. Right? We should. A lot of us have physical problems breathing with a mask on. I do. Yeah. I can't. Straight you know, up can't straight breathe. Up, can't, <laughs> it can't breathe properly. No. And, uh, you know, so it's hard to talk. Uh, I break out. I had to wear one to go in for some medical tests at a hospital. I had it on for maybe two hours and I broke out on both sides of my mouth. Maybe yeah. I'm allergic to the chemicals in the cloth yeah. of the mask. I don't yeah. know. And so a lot of people have a lot of valid reasons not to wear a mask. But I say they don't even need valid reasons in the sense that, the, uh, uh, in the sense that if they come to the conclusion, making their own decision and looking into the matter, that one, it doesn't effectively stop anything, mm. which it doesn't, and two, they don't want to wear a mask, mm -hmm. then the government has no business forcing you to wear a mask. Mm -hmm. Because you know what? For the first four months, we were crammed into the Toronto subway with no masks and no social distancing, like a pack of sardines. Yeah, exactly. And these same incompetent health officials, if they're right now, were saying that's okay. Mm -hmm. Right? So I don't know. And you notice how the dialogue and the mantra keeps changing with these fraudulent criminals, right? Mm -hmm. At first it was, oh, we're just doing this so that we don't overwhelm the hospitals, right? Yeah. Okay, well, 90% of all the ICU units in Canada never saw one patient. Mm -hmm. the IC, there's not one ICU unit in the country that was ever full. Mm -hmm. They shut down the other services, killing 40% more people from heart attacks during this period, right? Mm -hmm. So then it was all about flattening the curve. Yeah. Well, we flatten the curve, whatever that means, because the curve is, they can, they, can they, dr the they curve. draw the they curve, draw right? the they draw the curve. So we flatten the curve. Oh, now, no, no, we didn't understand. Now we need mass until 2022, because in September and October, we're going to have the second wave. And then in 2021, this is going to happen. 20, I really, like, people need to wake up. Yeah. People need to wake up. And then all the eminent experts, I'm not saying every single one, there is an avalanche of experts saying, you guys are out to lunch. I get calls and emails every day from experts saying, Mr. Galati, this makes no rational scientific or medical sense to me. And I say, that's because you're not understanding the geopolitical and economic agenda behind it. Mm -hmm. Because most scientists and doctors don't care about politics and economics on a broad scale. They're sincere, yeah. sincere, honest scientists. And they're looking at the science. Well, if you don't understand the geopolitical and economic uh, winners and losers in this, you're not going to understand the policies because they got n nothing to do with health. Now, look, don't get me wrong. Is there a corona? Is there a virus out there? Probably. Is it any more dangerous than your annual influenza? The evidence says no. Winston Churchill said, never let a good crisis go to waste. And these criminal globalists not only are doing that, but they planned a good crisis. Yeah. They're using this virus as an excuse to affect their final stage of a new world order. And it's not me saying that. It's them in their own words 10, 20, and 25 years ago. Yeah. And it's all documented. Yeah. And, it's, and it's set out in my statement of claim. It's all in the statement of claim. Yes, it's all there. Yes. I highly encourage everyone to read the statement of claim. Uh, there is a wealth of research and knowledge in it. I spent 598 hours uh, drafting and researching that, and all the facts are footnoted. It's not that I'm picking yeah, them out. Here. It's all footnoted. Because there's so many different pieces. Well, I try, to, I try to align it logically. My yeah. clients are trying to be clear about 
about it. And, mm-hmm. you know, I, I had help with it, obviously, in terms of my I would hope so, yeah. expertise. And I sought experts on it, yeah, totally. read it, to, uh, to make sure that, the, you know, uh, it was in line. But for me, for me, again, I go back to this. I say to people, forget the science, forget the medicine, forget the lawyer. If you're not a scientist, a doctor, or a lawyer, just apply your common sense to the political and policy decisions and statements that have been made since the first day of the so-called pandemic, and you will see you're dealing with a bunch of dishonest criminal clowns who are taking you for fools and spitting in the face of your common sense and intelligence, because none of these choices make any sense. And they will be held accountable. I'm hoping, maybe not. Hopefully, we need to push back. Well, you see what's happening all over the world now. Million person marches in Berlin, London, Rome, Seoul, Korea, yeah. Buenos Aires. Yeah. Yet, you don't see that covered in North America and media. No. Nope, not much. I'm getting the video sent to me from, from people there. there. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's on, it's on the social media. You can, you can locate it. I don't see CBC reporting on that. No. No. What CBC reports is on 60 people in Alberta, uh, you know, protesting the president of Belarus saying, the hell with your COVID measures. You're a bunch of criminals. Mm-hmm. And you know, there, is, there was a report, a study done, just before I filed my statement, the, my client's statement of claim, which I reference in the statement of claim, were at the University of Mainz in Germany. Mm-hmm. They compared the 14 countries that had no or very little measures mm-hmm with the rest of us, and they found that those 14 countries fared, did not fare any worse, and in fact, most of them fared better than we did. And in one respect, they, fa- they, they were leaps and bounds over us. Yeah. They didn't damage their economy. Mm-hmm. They didn't render every, their population poor. Mm-hmm. Do you understand the kind of debt load you're going to be talking about? Most people are going to lose their There's houses. There's still millions of people without and a job. Yeah. 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 So what what are the next steps for where are we at with the case? Well, I'm 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 coming to complete um, and completing the injunction on masking uh, uh, against the city bylaw in Toronto, and we were I was we were poised to be ready to file it, except that then the education minister Stephen Lecce uh, reversed his position and made masking obligatory in schools at the end of July. So rather than do two separate injunctions, we're, we're joining. So we're also taking issue with his, with the Minister of Education's yeah. ordinance on masking. Yeah. Okay. And just on the issue of masking children, the damage, and it, this is, you know, the experts say this, it's in the first uh, Hospital of Sick Children report of June 17, yes. 2020. Yeah. The psychological, sociological, yeah. And mental damage they're going to cause to this generation mm-hmm. is going to be widespread, deep, and irreversible. Mm-hmm. You're talking about imposing measures on children during their de- social development. Mm-hmm. They're going to be separated. Friendships are not going to be able to develop. Mm-hmm. They're, going to ma- they're going to hide their identity, their recognition of other persons, mm-hmm. reading you know, I was a clinical linguist before I went to law school. Seventy-two percent of all language is nonverbal. Mm-hmm. It's 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 body language and facial demeanor. Yeah. You're going to have a damaged generation. A big time. You're not. They're not playing together. They're no. on the video games all That's the time right. and right. iPads and stuff. More. They're going to be completely like, fragmented. Yeah. Okay. Separate, distance, massed units of consumption and obedience to the global corporations and the criminals who own them. You know, not not in my world. <laughs> like I like I, I can't I can't stand for for that. Like that's not in that's not the world that I'm yeah. I'm going to live in. Right. You know, and we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Well, I, I, you know, I, I hope more people wake I, up and I, I I am fearful of one thing. What? There will be pushback. By who? Well, the population. And depending on how far the government goes, this may not be pretty. What? What? The what's, is sorry. Not be peaceful. What is it going to exactly? So until they have a gun to your head, that's when you're going to start to wake up. Well, like people won't wake up, but but there are people with guns who will not accept it. Yeah. I'm not advocating that, but it will happen. No, I'm telling course. you. But I'm, I'm talking you. about the people that um, are still like, no, the government's looking out for me. The government knows exactly what I need and is keeping me safe. Well, when are you going to look truly turn around or stand up and see? you know, 
actually like look what's happening in Melbourne right now like yeah. it is terrifying it's insane it's concentration camp uh, rules yeah but you know and North Americans think oh you know it's no, that's not going to happen here no it's it will come here oh it's coming here they're pushing it there to see if they can it's bring gonna, it here yeah you know what I, I all I can do is uh as I don't go without a day without quoting Bob Dylan but as he said in one of his you know his epic song it's all right mom only bleeding you know uh, and I don't give fault to those who want to live in a vault, but it's all right, Ma, if I can't please them. Mm-hmm. You're not going to convince those people who think the vault is safe. No, and I think I'm done con- trying to convince yeah. people. Yeah. You know? Live your own life and resist your yeah. own, uh, you know, uh, uh, assert your own constitutional rights. Yeah. You know? And know your If rights. there are people in the middle who are, who are, who are open to being, uh, to listen to reason, great. Sure. I think I see a lot of those. A lot of people, I think, are waking up and standing up because of actions like ours in the courts and the protests. Yeah. They may have quietly felt the same way but didn't have the confidence totally. because of peer pressure and they're coming out of the woodwork, which I think yeah. will continue to happen. Exactly, and this is part of the reason why I'm here you know, doing this interview with you because there is a population of people out there that think these measures are kind of bogus. Yeah, and but, but say nothing because they don't want to rock the boat. Their job depends on it. it I'm sure 95% of CBC yeah. reporters fall into that. You can't, you can't live a massive lie. We've done it before in history, and look at the, look at the tragedy. Mm-hmm. I don't have time to, to, to go through the list of when societies have lived massive lies, yeah. right? Yeah. I predict if there's no pushback, if there isn't more pushback, that by uh, October, November, they'll be advocating door-to-door testing and uh, mandatory vaccines. We'll be in court on that. Next but month? No, this, no, no, not this that, year. No, that, no, October, the second wave, yeah. No. That soon? Mm, that's very interesting. The second wave is coming. That's very interesting to me. Yeah. It's quite fast. Because I feel like this is still the beginning. No, this is a fast-moving still. picture. No, no, this is a fast-moving picture. This is not slow motion. Yeah, okay. Yeah. The, the entire world economy has been turned on its head and fire burned in under four months. Yeah. Right? And what happened to, whatever happened to, oh, no, we can't just spend all this money. Poof, out the window. They're just printing money like it was yeah, uh, uh, Monopoly money, right? Whew. Well, maybe now you're just a little bit more caught up on what's gone down from a lawful and constitutional standpoint. Obviously, there's a lot more to this story as it keeps unfolding every single day. Just this past weekend, there were massive gatherings of people in Berlin and many other cities. Was this the pushback that Rocco was talking about? I'm really curious to know how you're feeling after watching this interview. I know it can be a lot, I'm, and I'm right there with you. I, I can feel... I can feel the, um, the stress and perhaps some anxiety that comes up with all this information and whether you're feeling any of that or some frustration confusion anger hatred annoyance or some strength or pride or awareness or hope activated ignited whatever you're feeling it's not wrong your feelings are not wrong okay let's start there I'm reaching out to the MPs and some of the other government actors named in the claim for an on-camera interview, just like I did with Rocco. I want to know what they think of the claim and what are their justifications for the measures. I feel like there's a lot of unanswered questions, so let's see. To follow this case or get some solutions to the measures that may be causing you harm, check out the links in the description. And if you enjoyed what you saw, Please consider subscribing to my channel. I put out a variety of content on all sorts of subjects. Also, guys, I did this interview all on my own, and I started my first ever Patreon page, and I would love your support. Patrons get exclusive director's cut, behind the scenes kind of stuff that happens at shoots, and a lot more. Look, the truth is I see media and news changing very rapidly right now. Things are being flipped. The whole system is correcting itself. And while it looks like the world is going to shit right now, there's a lot of good things happening in the background. And there's so much opportunity that is popping up right now as well. 
I'm putting something bigger together and I'm going to need a lot of help. And I'm excited about it. And I'm excited to share more. So thank you so much for your attention and for watching. I'm Raji and I'll see you next time. <laughs>